Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Bees for Build. In today's episode, we're gonna be assembling the entire front suspension on the Jumpacon, AKA the world's first off-road Huracan. Stay tuned. Before we get down to work, I wanna take a second out to thank our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by our biggest sponsor and the biggest supporter of our channel, Raid Shadow Legends. If you don't already know by now, Raid Shadow Legends is a great game. It's mobile and on your PC, and it's free. So if I sold you right there, just go ahead and click that link in the description. If not, hang on, there's more. So as you start playing the game, you're gonna find out that there are 10 different unique dungeons that are really challenging, and inside each one of them is a really tough boss, and each one takes a different strategy to beat it. And the playthrough on the story campaign is really great. It has a fully voiced story spanning 12 unique locations and three different difficulties to play on. There are 13 different very powerful factions. So you're gonna find a faction that you like and that fits your play style. And there are 460 unique champions. And with over 200,000 active clans, there's plenty of people to group up with and play through the game. And there are over 25 million players worldwide. So there's no shortage of players to fight against. And when you combine all those things, it basically adds up to there are infinitely different ways to play the game. Each each person's story and each person's playthrough of the game is going to be unique to their playstyle. I personally really love the game because of the PvP aspect. I love jumping in the arena and being able to face other players head on and see how well I'm doing. And I also love the graphics. It has very, very rich, very well detailed graphics. You can see on some of these champions how good the graphics look. And I just think the design aspect and style of them is really, really cool. And last month, Raid released their biggest ever update. And the main thing that they added is the new Doom Tower. There are 120 different floors in the tower and a bunch of secret challenge rooms and 12 different bosses to take on. So if you guys want to get a head start in Raid, all you got to do is click the link in the description below and if you are a new player you'll get your free void champion bulwark 50 gems an xp booster some energy refills and even an ancient shard as soon as you get into the game all that treasure is going to be waiting for you right here where i'm pointing that on the screen and remember the rewards are only available for the next 30 days and only to new players so it's really very easy just click the link in the description grab the game start playing you're really going to enjoy it thank you so much to raid shadow legends for sponsoring this episode let's get down to work Getting started on the front end suspension. We got a lot of pieces here. Uh, it may look a little overwhelming, but we've done this before. So we know we'll just follow our models and, uh, and start assembling things. So I'm gonna be working on the assembly of some of these different pieces that needed to be tack welded together. We're gonna continue to tack weld and test fit everything first, and then we'll go back and full weld, full fit everything. Uh, I'm gonna be working on that. Kyle's gonna be working on the reinforcement plating, figuring out where it all goes and how it maps onto here to reinforce all the rails. And Oscar's gonna be working on the tubing that runs across here to hold our shock. Basically is our shock tower tubing. So let's get started. I'm gonna give you guys a quick little update. I got one of these pieces done. This piece wraps right in here and you can see that's what these guys have been prepping the surface for. So we figured out where all the bars go and they all really tie in to these pieces here and here. So that's what we're focused on. Um, so Oscar's been cleaning and, and, and grinding and getting a, a lot of the seam sealer out of the way. So we're gonna be able to place our piece. And then, whoa, the wind shut the door for us. Okay, <laughs> slightly scary. And then we just recently figured out that this piece right here actually needs to go in through here and then slot down. So that means on both sides, we need to remove these panels. And that's what Kyle's gonna jump into now. So when we're removing a panel like this, we're gonna look for all of our like little rivets and studs in here. And then, uh, so wire wheel takes off the seam sealer and then we drill out the rivets and we'll try and tap that thing out as gently as we can. It's pretty interestingly integrated into there, but try and get it out pretty cleanly. And then we should be able to slot this thing right over that rail to be its steel reinforcement.
We've got the foundation in place so you can see the upper control arm mounting points are both right there. This piece slots in sideways over this existing rail right here. So we got this one and that one both done. And then on the lower, you can see why we had to remove this aluminum piece right here so this piece could slot over it. So that piece slots in there. I'm gonna start working on constructing the second piece so we have the second control arm mount. That'll go in right there. And while I'm doing that, the guys are gonna be working up here. There's a bunch of tubing that interconnects and is all constructed, it comes up to here and here, and that builds our shock mount. So they're gonna be working on the tubing and getting that all mocked up while I work on uh, assembling those other pieces down there. Oscar tried to catch the shop on fire. We had an ember that flew away and just started burning up this uh, moving blanket and stuff. That was, uh, that was a little sketchy. So we've got a bunch of control arms done. These are the lower control arms. They're wrapped up almost. Upper control arms are built and already in on both sides. So there is, on, on these guys, this is the other one of the lower control arms. There is a uh, little uniball that goes into each one of these. So we're gonna go ahead and tack the uniballs in and bolt. We got we went into the hardware store and got some bolts and we're gonna go ahead and bolt this piece up um, to the frame because it bolts straight to the frame without a spacer. And that has its input there and the input there. And then we'll make sure our tacks and our positioning of our uniballs are good here because there's no adjustability on the width for this. And if they all fit up snugly and stuff, we'll do a little bit of weld out and get those things bolted in there. Close one, Oscar. I tried. Luckily, we only have one, two, three, four fire extinguishers behind you just in case.
Got the lower control arms assembled and installed. They're just mock fit. So that piece bolts in. That piece we have to actually like drill through the frame rails. We have these pieces at the machine shop right now being built. Bolts are gonna slide through on both sides and then we weld the two together. Uh, it looks really good, man. This is really, really cool. You can see the upper control arm. Over here, the upper control arm is in the relaxed position. Um, and they're all together, that's really cool. So the next piece is the knuckle. The knuckle sits in between these two pieces right here so it can flex. Obviously this needs a little adjustment. Luckily they're adjustable right there. So we're gonna build the knuckle next. It goes right here and then we'll be able to uh, get that all mock fit as well. Driver's side and passenger side knuckles have been assembled. So now we're gonna go ahead and get them onto the control arms. There are some spacers at the mid that are being made at the machine shop right now that go um, in the upper and in the lower. So we're gonna be using washers instead. And we'll get that bolted up and then we're gonna get our wheel bearings bolted into these and then we can mock fit our rotors as well. Got the knuckle on and threw on the rotor too. We got a little bit of just homemade spacers in there. Again, we're waiting on parts from the machine shop. The uh, this is a Mustang GT rotor. It's a lot bigger rotor than I than I I guess I expected. I did not realize how big these things were. So that's a really good, really really good brake rotor to have. If anybody's building a kit car at home, I, I'd suggest looking to Mustang GT brakes. So we got our upper and lower control arm. We got our rotor. We got everything that mounts it to the frame. Now as this thing travels up and down, we got to put a. Uh, that's like too heavy to lift with one hand now. I'm not a wimp. Anyways, <laughs> there's a, we gotta put a clamp on this right down here because we don't have the bolts through it. But as this thing travels and actuates up and down, I'm gonna try my best here. <laughs> as it goes up and down, we need something to limit it. And that's where the bump stop comes in. So the bump stop, let me put this back down. The bump stop mounts in right about here and it holds our hydraulic bump stop. And then that makes contact with this piece right here the uniball joint. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, you know, measure our travel, see exactly where it wants to hit, make sure we line it up perfectly, and then we'll tack in our bump stops on the driver and passenger side. That's not light for one arm. Let's see you do it, Oscar. Oh. <laughs> see, it's kinda heavy. Oh, now you make it look easy. I didn't try grabbing it from here. It's still pretty hard, man. <laughs> uh, anyways, <laughs> back to work. Oscar can be stronger than me, that's allowed. the bump stops on so this is the bump stop mount that goes into here now uh, across here I think I mentioned this earlier but we are gonna build a dash bar that comes out and then connects up with the rest of the roll cage so the bump stop uh, mount is right here and then the bump stop sleeve is welded in there and then as that thing uh, maxes out at our max height or well the car would be, would be max low at that point then it hits that bump stop and the bump stop compresses got them in on both sides that is full assembly of the front suspension Nice. There's obviously a lot of really great engineering work that went into the design of all of these control arms and the knuckles and everything that we built to make it all work together. And that is all the work of Sam over at SEM Dirt. So I'm gonna put a link in the description. Uh, he's the engineer of all this. So if you have any crazy builds that you wanna do and you need stuff engineered, make sure to hit him up. So today is January 1st, 2021, it's the new year. And I just wanted to remind you guys that we are building this for the Mint 400, which is in March 
3rd is when it starts in Vegas. If you guys want to come watch, uh, if not, you'll be able to follow online. There's going to be a live stream, all sorts of great coverage, uh, tracking our progress in this race. So March 3rd, and there's going to be a link in the description. It's a really, really, really great event. I just watched Fear Loathing in Las Vegas and had no idea that he was actually out there documenting the Mint. It's a really, really cool race. I'm very, very excited for it. So we are another step closer to building our off-road race Lamborghini. Stay tuned for the next episode. Make sure to subscribe. See you guys soon. Peace.